Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because we have covenant to spend meaningful moments with the master. And the best way to spend meaningful moments with the master is by listening to the master and hearing what the word of God has to say to our lives. Thank you for being with us. We're in a series this entire week entitled No, K-N-O-W, the verb, no, not the adjective N-O, but the verb K-N-O-W, no fear. Know what fear is all about. There are 365 times in the Bible we find the expression uh, fear not. And God does not want us to be a prisoner of fear. Fear has a healthy role in our lives, but it also has a very unhealthy role in our lives. And we're talking about the six fears that um, most psychologists tell us that most people have to wrestle with. And we're looking at what the Word of God says about those fears. Uh, yesterday we talked about the fear of the future. Now today I want to talk to you about another fear that many people have, and that's the fear of commitment. The fear of commitment. You know, um, in life, <coughs> excuse me, commitment is critically important. And uh, sometimes you don't have to be the smartest, but you do have to be the most committed in order to succeed. Uh, someone asked the question, I wonder how the snail got to Noah's Ark. Now I know how the lion and, the, and, the, and the, those fast animals got to the Ark, but how did a snail get to the Ark? Let me tell you what got the snail to the Ark. Commitment. And what gets us to our goals is commitment. Someone defined commitment back in the day as uh, taking one step, take, taking another step. So when you want to give up, just keep just taking another step. Or as the old folks used to say back in the day in church, they used to say, just keep on keeping on. And to keep on keeping on is what commitment is all about. Now you will either have a, um, a mindset that says, leave or last. Non-commitment says when the things get rough, I look for the exit sign on the door and I leave. That's non-commitment. Those who have a I will last philosophy of life pray to God and say, you know what? I'm not going to bail out when things get tough. That is commitment. Some people go through life saying, you know what? I'm going to throw in the towel. No mas, no mas. Or I'm going to stay in the game. God wants us to be committed. And commitment is this, simply this. Commitment is fidelity. It is loyalty. It is faithfulness to a position. If you have a position, stay committed to it. Uh, you hear me talk a lot about the ADOS movement and Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore what makes them so outstanding is they are unwavering in their commitment to the justice claims of American descendants of slaves. Commitment means fidelity, faithfulness, loyalty to a position or a promise. You make a promise, commitment says, I keep the promise. Or not only a uh, position, and not only a promise, but a plan. When you have a plan, I don't care how great the plan is, if you're not committed to the plan, then the plan won't come to pass. And commitment means I don't throw in the towel, I stand the game. I don't leave, I last. Now one of the goals of Satan, the devil, and yes, I believe in the devil, and one of the tricks of the devil is to, to try to trick us into not believing in the devil because if you don't believe in the devil, then you won't take precautions about the devil. Like some people in high places believe that the coronavirus uh, was a hoax. And if you, don't believe, if you believe it's a hoax, then you don't wear a mask and you don't take precautions. And that is why, why America is only 4% of the population. We have 25% of those who have been infected by COVID it's because they didn't take it serious. And I take the reality of evil and Satan serious. And one of the goals of Satan, hear me carefully, is to try to pull you away from your commitments. You say, for example, you have a commitment to lose weight. 
I promise you, Satan's going to, to do something to try to pull you away from that commitment. It could be that that uh, it's it's the it's the neon sign on the Krispy Kreme sign, and you're just driving by and you see it, and then there's no one in the drive-through. My God! And Satan says you better do it now because there's no one in the drive-through, and you don't have to eat all 12 of those hot donuts at one time. And just think, you're helping the economy, you're helping to preserve jobs. So do it. Well, you know it's a trick of the devil because he's trying to pull you away from your commitments. Mark chapter 1 verse 13 says this. Where he stayed 40 days, talking about Jesus, being tempted uh, by Satan, while animals were there also, but angels came and helped him. What's this talking about? It's talking about Jesus had fasted in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. The devil comes to try to pull Jesus away from his fast and says, look, <laughs> if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And there are stones all over the ground because in Israel, if you've been to Israel, there are stones everywhere. That's why when they, when they wanted to kill you, they didn't hang you. They stoned you because you could have a public execution anytime, any place, and never run out of ammunition. And the devil says, turn one of these stones into bread. What is the devil doing? <coughs> He's trying to pull Jesus away from his commitments. And the devil will try to pull you away from your commitments. That's why Paul said, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. We have a fear of commitment, dedicating ourselves to a position, a promise, and a plan. Why are we afraid? Well, let me give you some reasons psychologically why we are afraid of commitment. I think one of the reasons we're afraid of commitment is because you've been committed and you got hurt. You were committed to your job and you got fired. You were committed to getting your degree and you can't find a job. <clears throat> you were committed to a relationship and there was a betrayal. And because you got hurt, you say, I will never be committed to nothing because you can't believe in anything. So, and I understand that, and it's understandable how we can feel that way once we've been wounded very deeply. So we're committed, we're not committed because we have been hurt or been taken advantage of, or someone that we believed in, we were committed to, we really believed in them, and they, they proved to be disappointing to us. <clears throat> Listen to me. Never say, or when you say things like, I'm not committed because he let me down. I'm not committed because she let me down. Listen to what you're saying. When you say she let me down, therefore I'm not committed, or he let me down, that's why I'm not committed. Your dilemma, your mistake was this. The person who let you down was never supposed to be the person who was holding you up. Because anybody who let you down is because you were expecting them to hold you up. You be committed to whatever God is calling you to be committed to, a plan, a promise, a position. And even when people let you down, God will hold you up. Notice it says that the devil tried <clears throat> to pull Jesus away from his commitment, <clears throat> but God sent angels <clears throat> to help him. And God will help you in your commitment. But I think the number one reason why we are afraid of commitment because we just don't think we have what it takes to be committed. We look and say, oh my God, I don't have what it takes to endure this. But remember what we talked about yesterday. There's, there's, they, they kind of flow together. Yesterday we said, we talked about, you know, just take the next step. Don't, don't worry about the advanced time, just the immediate time that is in front of you. Don't worry about being committed next month. <clears throat> just get through today. Be committed today. I told you that I'm in a PhD program uh, at a university in uh, Cincinnati and um, I just felt God was calling me. I had a plan. I wanted to, I've got a doctorate in ministry which is a ministerial degree but, but I, I thought that I needed to take this a little bit further and get a PhD. And one of the things that, the, that was in my head is how am I going to endure for three years in a, to, get in, to get this PhD? And then I discovered, you know what, I don't have to do it in three years. I don't have to do in a day, three years in a day. I just have to do in a day what a day requires. 
And things are going well. I'm enjoying the program because I'm just taking it one day at a time. And when you take it one day at a time, you look back and say, oh, my God, look, a month has passed or two months have passed. Just learn to be committed to today. And then when tomorrow comes, renew your commitment one day at a time. Be committed. Be committed. Be faithful to your marriage. Stay faithful to your husband. Stay faithful to your wife. Be committed. Be loyal. Stay faithful to your children. Children, stay committed to your parents. Be committed to your church, especially during this season when we cannot gather, even when we're scattered. Stay committed one day at a time to your church. And yes, if God is, has a plan that has, he, God has given to you, stay faithful to that plan. The writer of Hebrews said that all that is required of a steward is that they be found faithful. God wants you to be faithful, and if you do your part being faithful, God will do his part to help you to become successful. Listen to me. Even when people let you down, please know that God is committed to you, and that's why you can succeed. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25 says, let us hold on firmly. That's what commitment is. Hold on. Get a grip on whatever God has told you to do. Hold on to it firmly, to the hope we profess. Hold on to whatever God has called you to do firmly, because we can trust God to keep his promise, let us be concerned for one another, to help one another, to show love and to do good. Hold on firmly, keep your hope alive because we can trust God to keep his promises. Don't be afraid of commitment because your commitment is your pathway to success. Show me your commitments, I'll show you your future. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We want to know Fear, the fear of the future, help us to take one step at a time. The fear of commitment, help us to be committed one day at a time. Help us to hold firmly, to be faithful to positions we should have. Help us to be committed to the plans that you have given to us. Don't let us bail out, help us to stay in. Don't let us throw in the towel. Help us to stay in the game. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for being with us on another powerful point to ponder. Uh, if you need prayer or if you need a church home, please contact us at info at ssclive.org. Thank you for being with us. And in departing, don't forget what we say every day. Stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, Stay home. God bless you.